Good morning to you. Um, it's actually more a suspension. It's actually putting the pause on because there's a lot of uh, macroeconomic and geopolitical things uh, happening. And as you know, the ambition we set for 2023 is really out there and, and we still believe that's the entitlement of the company. But we just thought it was good to see with everything that's happening in Europe, but also certain evolutions in China, to just put a pause button, wait until the end of winter, see how everybody gets through that given the energy crisis, and then to basically uh, specify what we really expect for 23 and beyond. I understand the common sense argument with so much going on, Thierry, as well, but I wonder how the market's going to take that as well. Let me go backwards uh, with my next question. Is We've spoken so much, you, I, Jeff, Karen, over the last two years about the problems that COVID created and the supply chain problems that created. Have we now pivoted even quicker than a Liz Trust government for going from a situation where Actually, it's about supply chain constraints, and now it's more about consumer demand being problematic. Yeah, it is indeed a roller coaster, as you say, since the COVID. Uh, you really see the waves happening, and they happen very quickly. As you rightfully say, since about the beginning of 2021, we've been battling a lack of supply of raw materials, inflation through that, and basically trying to get our hands around the material we needed. And that has resulted in us having to do an unprecedented uh, cumulative price increase of 22% right now. 1.7 billion euros of raw material increases since the beginning of 2021. Now, we knew that was going to come to an end as the supply gets more normalized, but that, unfortunately, I would say, gets a bit helped uh, macroeconomically by the demand being somewhat softer. So what we've seen right now is an unbelievably fast shift in raw material available, availability, which is largely available right now, but also, of course, uh, accompanied by a drop in the raw material pricing. Now, that is actually very good news for 2022. Three, it's actually not very good news for 2022 because the whole channel has to work, including ourselves, has to work themselves through inventory. And I won't bore you with accounting, but that actually is going to be a negative for the next couple of months. And it was already in the third quarter before, frankly, we can get our hands on that lower cost raw material and get that in our books. So it's been a wild roller coaster with really very abrupt ups and downs. But again, all in all, it will be a much more normalized situation as we get in 2023. And I think that's a relief for everybody, including everybody in Axel Nobel. But Terry, we've just seen a 45.8 percent print on September German PPI here, which I guess is a reflection of how stubborn some of these challenges are through the supply chain at this stage. Um, how, do you, how do you take that on board, not take a margin hit and still continue to offer reasonably priced product to the consumer? Yeah. It's a, it's a good question, and in fact, it also shows, I think, why, for example, Europe is the, is the, is the geogra geography that has the biggest question mark around it on what's happening in, in uh, 23. Uh, we do believe that the category of products that we sell is pretty robust on pricing, um, given where they are being used and how they're being used. But I just want to remind you, of course, that, of course, the majority of our business is, is outside of, uh, of Europe, where we see slightly different dynamics. But in fact, that is one of the reasons why we felt let's get through winter time with all its uh, challenges around energy costs before we really have clear visibility on how 23 is going to shape up for us as, as a company and for the whole industry, by the way.